A couple of months ago, Tim Holtz, this man here, has posted a video on his YouTube channel in which he has given us a tour through his studio. When I watched that video, there was one question that came to my mind. What if Tim Holtz's studio was a junk journal? <laughs> This question didn't want to leave my mind and I knew I had to try to turn his amazingly stunning room into a journal. Today I'm here to show you my finished project. I want to give you a flip through of my journal and with this video I also want to take the chance to talk about some really crazy and for me unbelievable things that happened during my process of creating this project. Hi there and welcome to today's video. If you perhaps don't know me, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Luisa Heinzel and I'm a full-time junk journaler with a YouTube channel as you can guess, and an Etsy shop for digital printable paper. I live in Austria and I create junk journals with a little bit of art journaling. That's also the reason why my channel is called Junk Journal Art. If you already know me, <laughs> you know when the screen looks like this and my iPad is here, you know something special is going on on my desk today and you are totally right. If you want to dive really, really deeply into every detail that went into my project, then it would make sense if you watch Tim's video, so this video here, first. The link to this video is down below in the description box. I think if you've never seen the video, if you've never seen the room, it's really hard to understand the things that uh, were going on in my mind and the things that went as details into my journal. If you think, oh my goodness, I can see how long this video is, <laughs> you don't like to watch this longer video where I explain everything, or perhaps you don't like a flip through with talking, then there's also a video only with music available. The link is also down below in the description box. In that video, I'm showing you really close details. I went over my journal with my cam camera a little bit free-handed, if that's the right word. And I show you all of the details really, really close. So if you would like to watch that, the link is down below. And uh, Tim, <laughs> if you perhaps are watching this video as well, whew, this sentence makes me even more nervous. <laughs> then I would like to take the chance to wish you a very happy birthday. I know I'm a little bit too late. I'm actually three days too late, I guess. But I hope you had a great day. And of course, I hope you will enjoy this video as well. And I'm I'm totally excited because the whole time when I made this journal, I was with you, Tim, and with all of my viewers. So with everyone out there, with you, <laughs> the whole time I was like talking with myself and thinking about what you would think about this project. And now today is the day where I hopefully will get to know what you think about this. So please leave comments what you think. If you have questions, leave comments. Um, I will try my best to answer that and I'm, I'm, I'm totally out of control now. So I will put this away for a while because I need the space for my journal. <laughs> So here you can uh, see it, not totally because it's too big that my camera can catch it. So I will turn the camera to show you this thing. And this journal is not only a journal, but it's a, it is at the same time a box. Here you can guess is the journal. And this journal is standing in a little box that holds this whole thing here. <laughs> So here you can see it in total. I have put my iPad here to the right so that you can compare the reality here in Tim's room and the reality on my <laughs> desk. So um, this is, yeah, 
basically a box where I have put this whole thing here to this side of the box and the journal is living in here so you can take the journal out so this is the journal I will show you that in a second and this box is really cool because it can hold my journal of course a box for a journal is always great but at the same time with this thing, I will have a really cool decoration for my craft room later. So when I put this into my shelf and I walk along the shelf, I can think, who the heck has made this? <laughs> when I look at this now, to be honest, I can't really believe that I have made this. Um, at the same time, this is like a cover that would have been impossible to put to the actual journal cover. You can see the elements here are really, really dimensional, really thick, but I wanted to have it exactly like you can see it here. I think this was the first project where I had a totally clear picture about how this project shall turn out. So what you can see here is exactly what I had in front of my inner eye when I started creating this. I have chosen this specific part of Tim's room to put that here to my box because for me um, this is the most special part of his room. As you can see there on the right side in the video, um, this is exactly the place where he is standing while... Oh, hi Mario! <laughs> Greetings to you as well. Yeah, he is always appearing in the, in the videos, isn't he? <laughs> so, um, of course, this is the place where he is opening his videos. If you watch a live video by Tim Holtz, then you will see this. And for me, that is the most special thing about this room. And also a thing that is part of my daily life, because... Of course, I watch his videos. When he has a live video, I'm there and I'm watching that and I'm enjoying it. And I'm spending really much time, of course, with his videos. And so this is a part of my daily life as well. So that's the reason why this is here. Um, yeah, so now <laughs> I will turn the camera again so that I can show you the journal, of course. So here we go. Here it is. The cover of this journal is, as you can hear, a hardcover. I have constructed this cover out of old book covers that I have cut to the right size and then glued back together to build the base for this. And then I have glued some fabric on top that I had dyed with some oxide sprays and I have stamped on top of that with one of my absolutely favorite stamps by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. On top of the fabric there you can see some squares. These are made out of watercolor paper and I had a really really great time playing around with some stencils, different kinds of texture paste and inks, ink sprays, oxide inks, oxide sprays, and so on. I have also practiced some techniques with those mediums, and that was really helpful, actually. So perhaps you would like to try something like that as well. Take out all of your pastes and <laughs> mediums that you have and just play around a little bit um, and see what you get. This journal cover doesn't represent anything that is in Tim's room. It's only a cover. But for me, this was like creating something really whimsical with all of the different patterns of the different stencils, the different colors, but at the same time having something that is regular and that has an organization, an order, something that is clean. Yeah. So that's the reason why I have chosen this regular shape of the squares and they are not regularly positioned on this um, cover. They are a little bit irregular, but at the same time, they are straight. Yeah, so it's like an order that they have. And for me, that is something that Tim's room represents as well. For my emotion, when I look at that video and look at the room, then it's like chaotic, whimsical, 
of course, really vintage at the same time. Vintage is always a little bit chaotic in my eyes. <laughs> but at the same time, it has an order. Yeah. And he is also talking about his craft supply organization in his video and that has a system it's it's totally clear what he has done in his room but um it's existing next to each other <laughs> at the same time and that makes that room for me so special and so cozy and so it's it's just beautiful it's just so beautiful <sighs> yeah so <laughs> here for this label here, I have chosen one of these metal labels and this little thingy here inside, this paper label, is actually a piece of a packaging from some ideology ephemera. When you buy ideology ephemera, it comes in those little plastic uh, bags and in that bag there's always a piece of a little bit heavier paper and there's the signature of Tim Holtz. Unfortunately, this is only printed. Perhaps one day I can exchange this and have the real signature, Tim. <laughs> um, if you need my address, please contact me. Uh, so this that would be really, really special to have an original signature by Tim Holtz here. So I have taken this piece of the ideology packaging and um, I have taken a nail file and um, scratched ideology off from the paper. And then I have put this little sign here where I have written studio tour so that it now says Tim Holtz studio tour so that you know what you get when you flip through this journal. Are you ready to go into the studio? <laughs> okay, so let's open the door and go to the right. When we do that, we are going to see this. <laughs> Tim has made a really really cool artwork in a frame. You can see that here in his video um, and he has put some distress ink pads to his wall in this frame. For me that is a really really cool piece of art and I wanted to have that here on my first page in the journal. The frame I have made out of paper that is embossed because, of course, I can't put a wooden frame into my journal. That would be way too bulky. I have embossed that with a Tim Holtz embossing folder, <laughs> as you can guess. And I have made all of these tiny ink pads here out of some paper. Um, the top layer is watercolor paper. And I have colored that with my oxide ink pads because, um, yeah, on his wall there are distress ink pads. Um, I can see that in the video, but here I have used my oxide inks because oxide ink is my favorite medium in this entire universe. <laughs> um, this LED quote here that he has in the middle of his frame, I've made out of some die cuts. I have cut them out from white paper because the light in Tim's frame um, is white as well and I can't put light into my journal yeah so I thought uh, with a little bit of imagination this could look like this writing is lighted up and below this frame he has an old poker machine in the video you can see the machine here um, it is actually broken and he has put a really cool thing into this area here. He has a um, LED fireplace in this poker machine. Really cool idea. So you can see my poker machine here. I have um, put only the top part of the poker machine here. Um, and some of the things that he has as decoration on top of this machine. So here's this cool red telephone <laughs> that you can see here and this cool little car on this box. So it shall look like the car is standing on the box, like this car is standing on this box as well, of course. And I thought, why not make a little pocket out of this? So I have made this journaling card with this um, writing fluid bottle that is here in the background and um, 
I have to say my only reference for this journal was this video. Yeah, I have never been in this room. So um, all of the things that I could create in this journal, um, I had to see on screenshots on pausing the video and looking very exactly what that is. And some things I couldn't figure out what it is exactly. For example, those little balls in this bottle. Here you can't see it, but from another angle in the video, you can see that he has put yeah, some kind of balls or little, like, I don't know the English word, tiny little balls <laughs> into the bottle. And I have tried to imitate that here with um, paper circles from a punch. I've tried to color them in in the colors that I could see in the video, uh, but I really don't know what what is what that is exactly in this bottle here we have this old camera and um what you can see here in the background is a piece of ephemera from one of tim's ephemera packs 99 percent of the materials that i've used to create this journal are from tim holtz and the brands he's working with um but i've also included some things from my stash like for example buttons and that stuff and i've also included some of my own digital papers um, to make a cool mix for this journal as you can perhaps see here in the reality there's this i guess metal can there are some paint brushes this here on the bottom is a ticket roll and you can't see that here on my page um that has some reasons for this journal, I have chosen those things in Tim's room that are for me the most interesting and, of course, um, the things that I could figure out what it is from the video. Yeah, So sometimes that was really hard. And I um, put not everything to the page that I can see in the video um, because sometimes it would have destroyed the aesthetic of my page. Do you know what I mean? So this... Um, in reality, this looks really cool with this metal can and the brushes. But for me, for this page, that would have been too much. That's the reason why you can't see that here. And on some other pages, it's the same. Instead of this metal thing, I have put the word right here and this pointy finger. <laughs> that shall be a little joke. Because Tim is often um, joking about that he is saying this word right so often in his videos. <laughs> and that's... I guess a normal thing for me the sentence would be you know what i mean yeah he is saying right to um talk with his viewers and i uh, very often say you know what i mean <laughs> so i thought that could be a really cool word here and the pointy finger shows to the right of course then i have some elements <clears throat> on the pages that have nothing to do with the reality so for example this little collage here I've made because uh, it looks beautiful, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to have it here. And these elements are Luisa Heinzel style. Yeah, so um, the whole room is the room. And this is my style. I wanted to add this junk journal feeling to this. Yeah, it's it's a little bit like a glue book. Yeah, you will see that on, on the several pages, um, on the on the next pages, because many things are glued down. In this journal, there's not so much to take out like, like in my normal journals, I would say. Not so many journaling cards, flip outs and that stuff. We have some, but not so much like normally. And um, I wanted to add my style to the journal with these little elements here. So... When we turn around completely from here, we would have approximately this view. So we can see the whole room here. And you, you can see here in the middle, there's a really big table with really cool things on top. <laughs> For creating this table here in my journal, I've used several pages. On the one hand, I wanted to have the table itself here you can see the table. It's the whole table. But I also wanted to have the things 
that are on the table. And if you imagine that this is the size of the table, it would be totally impossible to put those tiny things here on top. So I have decided to put them to um, tags and smaller pages, as you can see here. In his video, Tim explains that this table originally was a dining room table, um, so not a craft desk, yeah? And it had a metal surface on the top and he asked his neighbor to change that up for him because he wanted to have some glass and then he collected all of those letterpress letters i don't know if that's the right english word and the neighbor has put this glass uh, thingy on top and um i think that looks really really cool and i have imitated that here by using this cool paper I had a really hard job to get this paper. This is actually from a um, Christmas paper pad. Just wonderful. It's like a little bit clear embossed in some areas. I love this paper. And I had a really, really dear friend who has sent this paper to me. And I wanted to have that here. And you can see here and here and everywhere there are all of those letters so that you have the Im imagination that that is the desk so this is the desk as well even if the desk is here also do you know what i mean so yeah <laughs> so um on this desk tim has this cool wooden thingy here with several things inside and several things are standing here on top of this thing and i have tried to make a version for my channel of this wooden little box here um that is this here for this i have used um this file folder die cut and these little pockets here are actually the specimen dies that i have cut in half so each of those pockets here is a half specimen die so that i can put some things in here um and these little labels also come from this die set originally they are way wider but i have cut them in half cut a piece off and then i have glued them back together and um, embossed them so that you can't see where the cut is in these little things here tim has several different items that he needs on his craft desk while he's working there in this little thing here he has his scissors I have this in here and on the first glance you might think okay it's a label that says Tim Holtz it's shiny what is that um you can't see any scissors yeah so this plastic thingy here on top that I have sewn here um, to this label with my sewing machine is actually a piece of the packaging from the Tim Holtz scissors perhaps you can see that here with this little silver uh, thing here if you have the scissors, you know that this is on the package. And I've just cut that out to symbolize the scissors. <laughs> so let's put that back in here. In this little drawer here, he has his brushes. <laughs> I know it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> And here on the bottom left, he has his glue. And on the bottom right, there are some random things like this air blowing tool for um, alcohol ink and that stuff. Just some random stuff. And for that, I have made it like this. Just some random splattering with ink and other mediums so that I have the possibility to write something here. So I have planned this as a little hidden journaling spot for myself. And on top of this wooden box here, he has a really cool, really old teddy bear, some stamps, some mason jars with something inside that i couldn't figure out this obviously metal can with some brushes there's there's some scissors as well so um when we start on the left we can see this 
we can't see anything i'm so sorry we can't we can see this metal can this blue can and i have put this thing here on top to symbolize the things that he has inside this is like a little page tab here i've played around with some buttons that i've just sewn on these are all from the stash of my grandma and my mother um, i'm really happy to have those and then when you look um to the right, you can see the teddy bear here. I have painted him by myself with some oxide inks, white gesso and a black Stabilo oil pen. Here you can see both of the stamps. I have put them, yeah, like puzzled them together out of different dies and also stamps. Um, perhaps you can see that this is a page tab die this uh, these are two of the label dies and this here is actually a stamp originally that was a light bulb or one and a half light bulbs so this is one light bulb I have painted it black here so that you can't see anymore what it was. I have stamped a little bit here to the handle. And this here is actually this. Do you know what I mean? So that um, you get the ima imagination that this is the handle of the stamp. These little um, letters here that say via airmail, I've taken from those negative dies that you perhaps might know. I will show you one on another page so you know perhaps these dies here and these little letters are falling out so that you have this cool word here and normally i think the most pe people throw them into the trash can but i have collected them <laughs> and then i have taken them for some of the labels that i have put into this journal and so on to make some really small writing that has a little bit of texture and there's also a globe here and I have made this globe here for my tag. Um, this is actually a piece of an atlas. I have punched that out. I want to come a little bit closer to the camera so that you can read what is written here. So of course it's not a coincidence that he has written Phoenix, Phoenix in Arizona. <laughs> I don't know how you think about that, but I love those little details. <laughs> so when we then look more to the right, we have those mason jars. I've made them with the help of some stamps. And here's some acetate. And I have put some of those tiny letters in there that you also can see here. And because this little page here yeah, um, belongs to this page... And all of those things that you can see here are in the reality on top of this thing. But, um, you know, the size, it, it's impossible. Yeah. So I've decided to connect both of these areas here by cutting this mason jar in half so that there's some kind of an illusion or a help for the eye that um, you shall look to the right here because this belongs together hopefully that makes sense this little thingy here that holds this wool um, I have just um, yeah sketched by myself and then painted it cut it out I have um, strengthened that a little bit with some glossy accents crackle to get this really cool vintage look and here on the right side, you can see something that is not existing in the reality so this is just some playing around with ephemera playing around with different techniques on this um, card here for example I've tried out some crazing medium and some crayons to make it look even more vintage than it is in its pure condition um, and I had very much fun with altering the ephemera pieces uh, and I've learned I think some new things that I can do with my mediums so that's that was really really cool and as I said, I wanted to include my own style and some pockets and that stuff to um, this journal as well, of course. <clears throat> the same with this thing here. 
this little butterfly collage is just some playing around some Luisa Hansel art <laughs> if you want to call it like that and then I've realized something <laughs> that was actually a little bit a joke for myself because Tim has so many things in his room yeah so many gorgeous things but have you realized that there's missing one thing <laughs> he doesn't have any plants in his room so <laughs> i thought i want to add some plants to the room um and i have done that with several die cuts as you can see here on this tiny card and then i thought louise wait if tim had plants in the in his room yeah how would they look after a few days a few weeks probably a little bit brownish because he has no time to give them water <laughs> and that's probably the reason why he hasn't any plants <laughs> yeah so <coughs> that is just <clears throat> a little joke <laughs> And then we can see the table from a top view here. This table is, of course, standing on the floor. So this is the floor. You can see the wood of the floor here. And <clears throat> Tim has two um, of those... Um, how is that called in English? Uh, those mats to stand on to protect your knees. Um, he says when you work um, while you are standing, then it's really hard for your knees. And for that, he has two of those mats that are really soft and you can stand on them yeah, to protect your knees. The gray mat is here, the black mat is here, and this is the table. And as I said in, uh, a few minutes ago, his neighbor has changed the original table a little bit by adding a glass surface on top of those letterpress things so i have put the letterpress to the table and then i have a glass plate on top of course this is not glass yeah it's plastic but i wanted to construct the table in exactly the same way like it is in his room so that means letterpress and the glass and uh, I, have, I have made that by putting these um, letters here that are a little bit thicker and then putting the plastic on top. And this plastic thing is actually from the package from the watercolor pencils. When you buy the watercolor pencils, then you get them in this little silver box and on top to protect the, the pencils uh, from falling around in the box, there's this thing. And I've just taken that off and it, it has the perfect shape and even this little thing here uh, to make this table. Um, and this thing here is really cool because you can then see that this is also some kind of a pocket. So this is a little bit too big, of course, yeah, but you could take some things and put that in between here. When you now look to this side of the table, you will see this little shelf here with some books and some popcorn packages and a little car that holds this box here. And you can see this little shelf in my journal here. <laughs> I've tried to find the right colors for the books here so that they have approximately the same colors like here that you can realize that those are exactly those books. <laughs> um, the popcorn packages um, are also nearly the same, like you can see them here. I wanted to turn um, these areas here into little pockets and tuck spots. I have not filled them up to make it easier for you to see what this shall be. So um, you could take a smaller tag or journaling card or paper and put that um, behind here so this is a little pocket this is a little belly band actually can you see it comes out here so you could put something in that in here that is is a little bit bigger and this is actually a little tuck spot for something like a very tiny tag or journaling card above this really big shelf where tim stores all of his binders he has those metal baskets and lots of old paint brushes hanging on the wall. 
I have some paintbrushes in my journal here. I know on his wall they are hanging horizontally and here I've put them vertically because I wanted to create this little pocket here to be able to put this journaling card in here. So this is also nothing that you can find in reality. Yeah, so this is just a little Luisa Heinzel project. Also this collage here. But these little guys here shall be the paintbrushes that you can see on his wall as well. This is actually some really fluffy fabric that I have cut into pieces and then put some mediums on top to make that a little bit stiffer. So now it's not fluffy anymore, but it feels like a really old and a little bit stiff paintbrush. And the baskets that he has on his shelf here, you can see here and on the following page. I have constructed those baskets out of some ideology packaging, as you can guess. I have taken out the paper from this plastic bag and then I have run that through my Big Shot with a die cut that makes this cool pattern here and that shall remind to the pattern here of the baskets. I know that the baskets um, here look not like metal those, I guess, are metal, but I wanted to have this effect of a recycled item. Yeah, so I wanted that you can see that this is originally the package of the ideology um, things. And you can see that here are some numbers on those baskets and that are exactly those numbers that are on Tim's baskets as well, of course. And when you look really close in the video and you look to basket number with the number 495, then you can see that he has some vignette frames in exactly that basket. <laughs> and that's the same with the other things here. Um, so these little tags here, you can take them all out and use as journaling space. Those are empty, but on the, on the other page, it's a little bit more interesting, I guess. So let me show you that. In basket number 447, there he stores his curio clocks. So I have taken a piece of the packaging from my own curio clock with this cool Curio, curio clock photo, I'm so sorry, that um, Paula has made. I have backed that with this journaling card so that I now know in this basket there are the curio clocks. In this basket, there's some Tim Holtz fabric. And here as well. <laughs> So let's turn around again and look back to the table again. Then we will see that Tim has all of his ink blending tools also on the table, of course. I have three of them here. Um, these are constructed out of mason jar stamps and also um, out of light bulb stamps. I've just put them together after coloring them um, in the right color so that we have these three little guys here and of course we have to collect them <laughs> that's why this little thingy is here and here we have this spinner with all of the other ink blending tools and of course this rotates <laughs> here I have put the word distress I think that needs no explanation why this is here. And this little guy here is at the same time a little pocket where I have put two tags in. This one is just some writing space, nothing special from the room on this tag. But this here is something that Tim has in his room as well as a really, really big um, decoration on the wall. Um, perhaps you would like to pause the video here and read this. For me, this is a really, really awesome text. Um, once I had figured out what this text says with the help of the video, I was like, yes, I know why this is there on the wall. This is so... Mm, 
how can I say that in in English? Uh, Tim also says in his video that um, you should surround you with the things that make you happy, of course, and that have to do with your life. And this It's not only a de decoration. It's not only a thing that you have in your room. Um, and I was very impressed about those things that he has said about quotes in your craft room. Great. Watch the video if you haven't seen that. I mean his video to hear what he is saying exactly. And you will probably understand what I'm trying to say here. So I have put this here. Some of the other quotes that he has in his craft room, you can see on this little frame here. And I have imitated this thing on this page here, below this Mickey Mouse. <laughs> this is um, at the same time a little pocket that can hold this flap thingy here. We have some journaling space here as well. And I've played around with some die cuts and some mushrooms. These actually come from my Etsy shop. These are the fuzzy cut mushrooms. If you're interested in having mushrooms, <laughs> you can find the link to this item down below in the description box. Um, so that's actually a digital ephemera pack that you can print out at home and then cut the mushrooms out and use them in your projects. <clears throat> and um, he has also some really cool Disney art in his room. Um, he's a Disney fan, <laughs> obviously. So I have tried to paint my first Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It looks a little bit strange. But um, yeah, I haven't done this um, not digitally, but with the Distress watercolor pencils on watercolor paper. And for me, that is way harder than doing some something digitally um, because, of course, you can't um, erase things so easy or go a step back. Um, when it's there, then it's there. But I'm a little bit proud that I could manage it and I think you can see that it shall be a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I've added... Um, a Walt Disney quote here that Tim has posted on his Instagram a while ago that says, laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. Yeah, just, just fantastic. This quote is just fantastic. On this page here, I've played around a little bit and also with some of my own digital paper. So what you can see here in the background comes from my Watching Over You collection. That's a whole paper collection with several different items that you can combine, mix and match like you want. And this is the collage paper. I will link that down below for you as well. And I thought that This paper matches really well with the ephemera packs. This is, for example, this curator ephemera pack. Um, this is one of the tags that you can also get in one of those ideology ephemera packs. And I thought, especially the color of this tag matches really well with these plants there, with this greenery. And yeah, you know, <laughs> some botanicals in Tim's room. And then he shows this here in his video, really cool thing. And also this area there on the top of this. So let's perhaps start with this here. So here we have those stone faces. If I remember that right, then Tim has got those as a present from Heidi, from Simon Says Stamp. And I have taken this photo here and then I have taken my iPad and tried to paint these faces by myself digitally. Whew, I'm so sorry. Um, and I have changed them up a tiny little bit. As you can perhaps see, those eyebrows are relatively extremely. I wanted to have them look a little bit funny. I mean, they look funny in reality as well, but I wanted to add a little personal idea, I would say. So those are here. And um, this thing here shall look like a giant ticket. Perhaps you can see that here with these little uh, yeah, punched corners. Um, from this perspective, you can perhaps see it a little bit better. So this shall be the perforation between two tickets. 
Here's the one, and here's the rest of the second one. Here in this little tuck spot, I have the things that are here behind those stone faces. You can see here this black and white thingy and this red thing. I think that are actually little pieces of, of a train. I'm not totally sure, but from an older video, not from this one, here I had really big problems to figure that out, but from an older video where um, I guess um, he made a um, craft room tour with scrapbook.com, I'm not totally sure, but there I could see that it, it is something like a tr tiny train. So I have tried to get a really abstract version of that here to this journaling card. And I have put these both cards in there. <clears throat> and if you hold them like this, they say Vintage World. And for me, this is some kind of a, um, a caption for Tim's room, like a title. For me, this whole room is like a Vintage World. And while I was working on this journal, it sounds crazy, but... I was in this room, yeah, I was totally in this vintage world that he has built up in his craft room and also in the whole house. I mean, if you have seen his Halloween decor tour or the Christmas decor tour, you know that this whole house is like a vintage world. And for me, that is like really crazy because um, in my area here in Austria, we don't have this thing that you call yard sale, I guess, or, or those flea markets are really, really rare where you could find items like he has in his room. Vintage items here are relatively hard to get. Um, there are only a few people that um, sell that also online so that you can, uh, if you are very uh, lucky, uh, get some of that. Um, and f for me, for my perspective, all of those items are, not all, but the most of those items that I could get that I could call vintage are relatively boring. Yeah, so it's like nothing special. That sounds that sounds mean. Yeah, but for me, all of those um, vintage things that you can get overseas and that I see in other videos, um, especially from American people, are very special because yeah I don't know them mostly do you know what I mean so yeah uh, here on the very left it's really hard to see there's a tiny thing that I don't know what it is but it is here <laughs> there's a spool with some kind of a silver yarn and this car that has some more cars on top I don't know the English word uh, car transporter or how is that called so you can see the yarn spool here in the background. I've also added a tiny little safety pin here because I thought that looks cool. <laughs> I've destroyed the paper a little bit. And this thing is actually obviously the same thing that Tim has in his room. For me, that was really surprising to find this ephemera piece in one of the those baseboard ephemera packs um, because I realized that this is the exactly same thing that he has, has in his craft room. And with collecting all of the materials for this journal, I've realized that um, he has many things in his ephemera packs that are in his room as well. And for me, that is really cool. That is really cool. That brings a really close connection um, when you know that you are working with things that he has in his room as well. I mean, that's that's cool, isn't it? And I am um, I do that for my own digital papers as well sometimes. So I often use um, photos that I have made in holi on holiday, for example, or some special things that I have in my own room. I try to include into my digitals. And I'm hoping that that brings a little bit of kind of connection between us. And isn't that cool? I mean, we are in so many different places in this world and um, we we will probably never meet in the real life. Yeah, but it, it is a connection and we are all together and that makes us like sitting at the same desk and crafting together. And that for me is really, really special. Um, on 
this little shelf here, you can also see a trophy cup. I have put the trophy cup here in the wrong direction so that this little bird can sit here. If you watch Tim's video, you will not see a bird in that place, but you will see a dog, a white dog that has uh, green feet and this red thing here around his neck. And I wanted to have a bird here, so I've decided to take this die cut and the colors of the dog and put him here. I thought that looks really funny when he is on top of those faces here. And the cars that I've talked about a second ago are here. You can flip this up to have some journaling space here. I mean... I would put some white gesso here, yeah, so that you can journal here. But you could also, of course, write tiny things in between of the writing here from the paper. And the thing with those black little containers, you can see here. And here, this sign says serial 296625. So I've put this here with the help of some die cut numbers and letters. Here we have some more of these little uh, things. And of course, we can take them out <laughs> because you can take them out here as well. And here's something inside. All of those little things are the specimen dies, as you can see. And I have not glued them here so that I can put these little things here inside there. And they uh, can yeah, be held by the specimen die. And this little thing I have constructed out of different dies from, I guess, the same set, but that doesn't matter. And that are two of those. And I have connected those with this little label die cut that I have folded in half so that I get this little hinge here. And this is just a button and I have put a bulb pin around there exactly like Tim has it in his room as well and he has labeled these little guys here with the things um, names of the things that are inside of these little containers I have decided because this is also so small yeah and I wanted to have something special here I have decided to put some things here that have to do with him and myself so this says 71, 1971. If I'm right, that is the year when Tim was born. In here, I have a little collage. So in those little containers in my journal, you will not find the things that he has in his containers. He stores there all of those um, ideology stuff like charms and other tiny things. And um, as I said, he has written the names of that to those little labels. But I have decided that I want to uh, play around with tiny stuff. Yeah, I love tiny collages. So I have played around a little bit with that. This says 41 because when I started making this journal, I was 41 years old. I'm still 41 years old. <laughs> I'm saying that so extremely because there's a little accident i will tell you about that in a second so in here we have this little collage then here it says arizona obviously and we have this little butterfly here and um, all of the backgrounds here I have stamped and then embossed with white embossing powder. I love white embossing powder, by the way. <laughs> These both letters are my initials, of course, Luisa Heinze. And then I had a really lucky day because when I tried to make these little tags, I found a magazine with... Um, images of the paper dolls in exactly the right size to put them to those tags and I had a really hard job to <laughs> cut them out and I've also put some tiny um, die cut flowers here to those so that they can be held by this little pocket 
this little thing has an 8, but as you can see, I mean, this is the 8, as you can see, it is like this, because this shall show eternity. I guess I will be forever connected with junk journaling and for my emotions also with Tim Holtz. Not only because I made this journal, but also because he is a really big role model for me. I have told you about that in previous videos. Have I shown you what is inside here? No, I guess not. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that is also very important. We can't miss this because this says you do you. And that's also, I mean, that is not a coincidence that this um, sentence is in here. You know that Tim says this sentence very often. And it is not a coincidence that this eternity eight is here. Because um, I think when you have a YouTube channel and when you are like in the public um, and many people are watching your videos, then you have to do you. There's no other way. I've realized that relatively early when I started my YouTube channel um, and I tried to figure out what I want to show here, what people are interested in, I figured out that I have to do what I like, what I love, and there's no other way. And I'm really, really grateful that I'm allowed to do what I love and that I'm allowed to do that for a living. That's a really, really big gift for me. So, um, yeah, that's why I've tried to keep this as a reminder, even if I don't need the reminder. Do you know what I mean? Ah, that is so hard for me to explain in English, but I think you got it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So this little label says 15, and there are only three people in this world who will understand why this is funny. <laughs> Shall I, shall I um, tell you this story? Okay, so I will do it. Oh my goodness. So perhaps you know my friends Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and Honey from Honey Loves Paper on Instagram. We have met in May last year for the first time, really special day. And they made jokes about me living on a campsite and about me loving Tim Holtz. Yeah, so <laughs> in our little chat before we met, we had a discussion. And Honey asked um, if she is allowed to come into my caravan and into my tiny house. Because here are many things that have to do with Tim Holtz. And they are like my treasure. Yeah, when I am here, I'm really happy that I have those materials, mediums and that stuff. Um, not the whole room is Tim Holtz. Yeah, of course not. My room is Luisa Heinzel. But being Luisa Heinzel also means using Tim Holtz products because that is a great combination. Yeah. And she asked if she's allowed to come into my room. And I said um, to decide that. Um, you have to rank Tim on a um, little, yeah, how is that called? Scale, I guess. So um, give me a ranking and then you can, I can decide if you can come in. And I said on a scale from zero to ten, how much is Tim? And Honey, within the next second, was like 15. <laughs> And that's because the 15 is here and always when we are perhaps a little bit sad or our day was not so good, um, then we only have to write the number 15 into our chat and we all are happy. That is just, it is just great. Um, yeah, so here we have a little mushroom and I'm hoping that I will get, uh, that I won't get any um, bad messages from both of those friends. Oh. <laughs> Barbara, honey, I'm so Sorry, <laughs> but some things have to be said. <laughs> so 1981 is the year I was born. That's the reason why the 81 is here. We have this little collage here. And here 
it says five. You know that five is a special number for Tim as well. Not only for him, but that's the reason why I have this here. And we have a sentence that he says very often in his videos as well. That's so good. And <clears throat> I have made this little thing here to put that in here. And just a little reminder, if you want to see those collages or these little elements on the edges of the pages uh, in detail, then please watch the flip through with music. The link is down below in the description box. And in the beginning of this video, I have also told you that some things happened to me while I created this that I nearly can't believe. Things where I thought, holy moly, what is that? And one of those things has to do with the flip through with music. So let me quickly talk about that. When I edited my video, this flip through with the music, I was searching for some matching music on Epidemic Sound. I'm using Epidemic Sound for the music for my videos. Um, some of you were interested in that. So that's the answer where I get my music from Epidemic Sound. And I thought, Ooh, which music, I mean, which style of music could fit to that video? And I was in those little categories in the Epi Epidemic Sound app. And I've, yeah, I was a little bit lost, I would say, because I had no idea which music I wanted to take. And then I thought, okay, just click the first track that is shown there. I clicked it, liked the music, thought, okay, I want to use that music for my flip through with, with music. I downloaded the track. And then I realized the name of the track. Yeah, I haven't read it before. I've just downloaded it. And then I read the name of the track. And the track is called Oxide Tape. What the heck? <laughs> I was like, what? Oxide Tape? So perhaps that is a new thing for Ranger. <laughs> Ranger, if you're watching. What is Oxide Tape? That could be something really cool. <laughs> We need that. We need oxide tape. I don't know what it is, but I think it's a really, really cool thing to use in junk journals and other paper craft projects. <laughs> oxide tape. Uh, yeah, okay, so what is here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> when we look from this area here to the left, can you go to the left, please? I have watched this video so often, you can't believe that. Uh, Tim, if you are realizing some strange things that are going on with the watch time of especially this video, yeah, then that was me. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> so when we look to the left, we can see this uh, rack with road maps. And also a sign here on the top and on the right and something that is below here. So let me show you that because that's what is coming next here in my journal. So this roadmap rack is here with all of the roadmaps. <laughs> the four that you can see here is here on this little card. And here's a little sign that I actually couldn't figure out what it is exactly. I think that's because of my bad English vocabulary. But here we have the numbers 21, 8 and 10. And I've tried to put those to this little card. And the 4 is here as well. That is this 4 here in the corner. And of course, uh, we have the word roadmaps here. Um, that is written here. And this is also actually the file folder die cut in the back. And this is, um, yeah, some kind of uh, manipulated specimen die. <laughs> so that I could get the shape of this thing here. And all of those cards, of course, you can take out. So not only this one, but uh, the same with the others. Then they look like this. And um, some of them have, have this tiny paper clip to hold them together. And of course, you can find your way with this map because it's a real map. Yeah, you can fold it out. <laughs> and then you have 
this here. This actually was, or it still is, a sewing pattern. I have played around with some coffee a little bit, as you can see here. I have left the back like this so that you can see what it was and that you also have the possibility to put some white gesso on top, only a thin layer, and then um, you can journal here. And on the other side, you can see it's a map. <laughs> For me, it's a map, a really abstract map, I know. But I had lots of fun creating these. And now you can have some hidden journaling spots with the help of all of those maps. So ooh, go in there. So of course, you can take them all out. But um, yeah, they are all the same, yeah, like like this one here. When we then um, look uh, to the area below the cards, there's this little sign, and on the left there's a window, and this is actually the window where Tim is recording his videos. I have this window twice in my journal. Um, here I've played around with this little collage and that stuff a little bit. Um, you can't see the camera stand here and that stuff that is on another page. But I really liked this idea with this moon here in the background and I wanted to have that here a little bit artsy. If you compare both windows, you will probably uh, know what I mean. So here on the top... Um, in his room, there's a little sign that says Master Street, and there, uh, on the left, there's a little car that is hidden here. And that this clock shows 9 o'clock is also not a coincidence, because, um, as I said, this is the window where he has the table to um, record his videos. Yeah, When he has a live video, he is standing here, and the camera is here, and... The live videos start at nine o'clock his time. Yeah, for me it's another time, of course, because Austria, uh, Arizona. But um, yeah, I wanted to have this here. So um, here we have this area with those thimbles and this little uh, bus, another trophy cup. So if you watch Tim's video, you will see those things here, and I hope you can, um, yeah, see what this is. So this is actually a little pocket i have put this little tag for journaling in here we have two journaling cards in this pocket here and then there's um something um that i tried to get really abstract to my journal i'm talking about this area here so we you can see those lifesavers thingies here and I have um, put those into several different spots in my journal because um, this area actually for me was not so important yeah all of those jars with the little things inside I mean there are great things inside but for me that was not so it was not speaking to me so much so I have some of those lifesavers packages and advertisements in several spots in the journal and i have found this thing here um that also comes from this lifesavers but it's a disney version and i thought why not take this and make a little banner here i mean tim and disney you know <clears throat> Here I've also played around a little bit with some collage elements and here on the bottom we can see uh, the little accident that I have talked about a few minutes ago because here's one of these uh, black little containers that I have shown you before and this says 51. <laughs> and when I started the journal Tim was 51 years old. Now he is 52 because his birthday is three days ago. Unfortunately, I couldn't finish the journal um, earlier, so that this now is a reminder for his age when I st started the journal. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy. <laughs> but 
this turns into a joke as well at the same time. On the next page, here in my journal, you can see this area here. And I had a really fun time with this clock. <laughs> so I thought, which time is the clock showing in the video? And I looked here at the clock hands to see the time. Then I went through all of my clocks from my stash, but I couldn't find a clock that shows this time. But then I thought the clock hands are in between of 20, 21 and 22. And 20 plus 21 plus 22 is 63. <laughs> so this page and this clock shows the time of this clock that you can see in the video really abstract i know and you can't of course see it if you um, don't know the explanation but this is not a coincidence yeah that's what i'm trying to say when we then look a little bit more up, Tim, up, please. <laughs> Where is it? And a little bit to the left. Then we can see this here. So here on this suitcase that you can see here and here, obviously, there's this really beautiful hand carved wooden doll. I have painted this one here in Procreate with the reference of the video. There are some paint brushes in the back and there's palette here that you can see here. Those crayons and the books and so on. And this is at the same time a little tuck spot that can hold this tag. And as you can see here is um, a little container with paint brushes. I have that here and I have a real paint brush here. So um, this time, compared to the other paintbrushes that I've shown you before, this is a real pan paintbrush that actually was a really cheap paintbrush where I could take the top off, so the, the bristles and uh, this silver thingy. I've shortened this silver part a little bit. And this here is actually one of those wooden sticks that you can use to stir your coffee. Um, and I have taken a nail file and file that to the right length and proportion. And I've used that because this is so flat and I've just put that back into this little hole of this silver thingy there and then I could glue that down. Uh, I've added some white gesso to make it look a little bit more old and used. And here on the right, you can find um, some little drawers with really old ink pads and I have this here as this little card um, and this is at the same time a pocket here and a pocket here so that I could put some journaling papers in here as well if I want and I've also played around with some playing cards here for a little collage because I thought that look uh, looks cute there um, the same with this woman on this card just for fun <laughs> so when we look um, a little bit more to the right from there we can see this monkey here and <laughs> Tim said in his video that to some people the monkey is a little bit scary but that he likes him I love this monkey this monkey is just amazing um, but I wanted to um, give him some friends for those people who think that this monkey is scary. <laughs> I've put this cute little girl here and the other one here to make this a little bit more not so scary. <laughs> so um, here on the top, so this is actually meant like this. Um, th those drawers with the ink pads are here. Yeah, here. And on top of that, so... On top of the page and here on top of the shelf there is this here um, there's really giant tea and those little doll heads here and this box 
And here's also another of these little guys here. I had some left over because when I constructed these little containers here, I was not sure how many I can put to the same page of the journal because I didn't know anything about the proportions of the journal in the beginning, of course. And I've made these before I made the pages and then decided for the page, uh, the size. So, uh, yeah, I've just randomly put them um, in some places where I thought they look great. So, um RE stands for Reute, that's the next bigger city here um, next to the campsite. On my next page here, I have this area with the ticket rolls and this little thing here in the background. So here you can see the ticket rolls. It's at the same time um, a little tuck spot for holding this tag. Also, I have to leave that out because I have to tell you something about this clock in a second. Some more tickets here and I have this little ink bottle thingy and the tea that is here. It's really hard to see here but when you watch Tim's video you can see that really clearly. It's really small here and with this page and especially with the clock there happened something. I I still can't believe it. I can't believe that that happened. So <laughs> I was in my craft room and please imagine um, I have really much um, space on tables where I can put my things. I'm a really lucky girl to have much space. And while I was working on this journal, I had put all of my ephemera pieces and I'm also talking about the tiniest pieces like little labels and that stuff to my tables Um in a specific order that helped me to find the things that I needed. So all of the clocks were together, all of the labels were together, everything there, don't breathe. Um, and then <laughs> when I made this, I realized that here in the background, there's a little clock as well. And I thought, oh, this space is a little bit empty. I can put the clock there as well. So I went to one of my tables where all of my clocks were and I went through the clocks to see if I can find one that is similar to the one here in Tim's room. But I couldn't find one. They were all a little bit different. So I have chosen one that had colors that I liked here. I went back to my table where my journal was with this clock, put some glue on top I mean, on the back, and I've glued the clock here. And while I was rubbing here with my finger to make sure that it is uh, stuck down really well, I thought, which time is it on this clock? So on this clock, it's five to three. Then I looked to the video and realized that on this clock in the video, it's also five to three. What the heck? Totally shocked. I went to my kitchen where my hubby, who is not my hubby, was making a little snack for us. I told him what happened. Totally shocked. I have taken a coffee and then I went back into my craft room. And then he came in and said, Louise... Both clocks are showing 5 to 3, but the real time, I mean, when I did that, was also 5 to 3. I mean, there were some minutes in between of this happening, yeah? And when I told that to him, of course, I didn't look to my clock in my kitchen. But uh, we could figure out that it must have been approximately 5 to 3 in reality as well. what <laughs> this here is a little kind of flap thingy with two pockets we have these little tags in here and here you can also see those lifesaver thingies in one of the jars uh in tim's room that is standing behind those lifesavers thingies there he stores some i guess ceramic um doll hats 
I've tried to symbolize that with those heads here of the people. Um, when we look from here to the left a little bit, then there's um, a little thing on the wall that holds these little containers here. And on the top, there's this little car. And that says, <clears throat> seize candies. So I've stamped here. I'm here for the candy from the last Halloween stamp set because I thought that would look really funny here. So you can journal on the back. And because of the fact that this comes from the Halloween stamp set, I've also put some Halloweenish stuff here. I mean, what would Tim Holtz be without Halloween? Yeah, that would be a little bit strange. <laughs> Here on the next page, I've also played around a little bit with a little collage and with some um, golden embossing on real vintage Italian letters. You know my love for Italy, so I've decided to include some of those there. What you can see on this page here is the right part of this area here behind the ticket rolls. We have a little journaling card in here and here on the bottom there's an old camera some books and what you can't see um, here at the moment there is um, a doll head in front of the books so i have made this ooh, like this here and i've added um, both of these paper dolls here because i thought they look great with this <laughs> a little bit creepy head here and there's this a tag that you can flip and then you can secure that here with this little paper clip. The most of the butterflies um, that you can find in this journal come from my Etsy shop. Um, the, so this one, for example, and some others. Um, there's a fuzzy card ephemera pack available in my shop that's called Butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> fuzzy cut images i will link that down below for you in the description box if you perhaps need some butterflies for your own stash you can never have enough butterflies so both of these also come from that ephemera pack and then so here you can see the ticket rolls when we look more to the left then we can see this mirror with this creepy hand that holds an apple um, and Tim has also explained in the video that this hand was the inspiration for the ideology hand. <laughs> this hand actually gave me some headache because I had a really hard time to figure out how I could uh, put this hand with the apple and this mirror into my journal. But then I found the solution. Um, <laughs> I've asked my hubby, who isn't my hubby, to um, hold his hand like this and then I made a photo I will show you the photo somewhere here so that you can imagine how the original photo looked like and I have put that photo into my Procreate app on my iPad um, put the apple inside manipulated the hand a little bit and then uh, I've printed it out cut it out and put that to the mirror and since the mirror is silver, of course, but the hand is relatively big and covers much of this area here, I've embossed some stamping with silver embossing powder here and also here behind this journaling card to make this page a little bit like, yeah, mirroring uh, <laughs> a little bit more. When we look from here a little bit further to the left, there's um, another little wooden box on Tim's wall where two nutcrackers are standing in. Thankfully, Tim had posted a photo to Instagram of both of these nutcrackers um, so that I could take that as a reference to paint my own nut nut crackers in procreate so one of them you can see here i've turned them into cards that have an effect because they can dance <laughs> to symbolize this wooden box that is on his wall i've used this embossing folder here this 3d embossing folder that makes this wood look so cool this is one of my absolutely favorite embossing folders 
so cool and really easy of course to use and to get this effect and then here we can see this little sign that says let whoever think whatever um that is actually here um above the ticket rolls and it's a thing that he has i guess bought on etsy um and that also has some light so um those letters are meant to look like they are lightened up i've played around with little collage here with a paper doll and then um, here there's this big cabinet this originally was an envelope and I've turned that into this cabinet and um, in this cabinet Tim stores all of the things that aren't released, things that are new, things um, that he can't use until they are released. So it takes time to be allowed to open this. So that's the reason why I've put this little thing here that says time. But it doesn't only say time, but it also says Tim, of course. <laughs> when we flip this, we have here this little elephant and this star. And all of this is actually um, standing on top of the cabinet. So that is basically this area here. Here's the elephant, there's the star the paintbrushes and these little things here, this little pick and those, this little matchbox and this paste I've put here. And this thing here is absolutely crazy. Something absolutely crazy happened with this page. Um, this page actually is I guess the most special page in this journal um, because Tim has explained in his video that he made this little piece of art for himself when he had his heart surgery. He said that this is a piece of Tim art and that it is probably the only piece of Tim art in, in his room. Um, Next to being surprised about what he said, I was really impressed because of the meaning of this piece of art. I was a little bit shocked and confused that he said that it is the only piece of art because I think his whole room is a piece of art. Um, for me, art it's not only putting things together to create something new, um, having an idea, painting something, gluing something together, cutting something out, make a collage or something like that. Art for me is also what he is doing with his decoration in his craft room and the rest of the house. And the meaning behind this piece is very special because he explained that he has made this for himself when he had his heart surgery. And when I thought about the elements that I can use for creating this here in my journal, I was like, okay, the paper doll, no problem. The wings, no problem. String, no problem. This thingy here, no problem. This pencil, um, packaging here no problem but this car was a bit of a problem because um, I have nothing to do with cars yeah I have absolutely no knowledge about cars and types of cars to find a reference to paint this car because I've painted this by myself but I needed a reference otherwise no one could realize that this shall be a car so I talked to my hubby, who isn't my hubby, and I said to him, can you please search for me in the internet for a picture of a car that looks similar to this one here in Tim's video and in the studio? And then um, give me the picture, yeah, so that I have a reference for my own drawing of this car. On his phone, he found a website 
where the photo of the car was. But he had problems to save and send the photo to my phone. So I said, just send me the link of this website and then I can save it by myself. He has sent the link to my phone. I've clicked the link and found the picture. And then on my phone, I've pressed the image to download it. Normally, my phone saves the photos in the order I download them. Meaning, if I would download a photo today, in my gallery on my phone, it would have the date of today. Yeah, and it, it, it's in the right order. The last photo I download is normally on the very top in my gallery. After downloading it, I couldn't find the photo in my gallery. And I was like, hey, where the heck is this photo? And I was scrolling through my gallery to find the photo. And I thought it, it, it isn't there. Yeah, but I had downloaded it. And then I realized the following thing. And that's one of those things that I can't believe that happened. So here you can see my gallery. You can see here several screenshots that I've made to have a reference for the journal. And I've scrolled and I was a little bit like uh, confused and that stuff. And I scrolled down to the very bottom. I mean, here are the older photos, yeah? It gets older and older and older. And here on the very bottom, I found the photo that I've just downloaded. The date of the photo says March 2019. And I was like, hä? Why is it saving the photo for March 2019? That doesn't make any sense, yeah? And then I thought, Luise, wait. This was made when Tim had the heart surgery. In the very beginning of the video, he shows us this glass dome that he got as a gift from Paula. And he mentioned that he got that in the time when the heart surgery was and that it is dated. So I was like, okay, obviously the heart surgery was 2019. My phone said the car is was saved in 2019. And then I was like, oh my goodness, it's the same year. And then my brain went on and on. And I was like, in which month was the heart surgery? So I went to Tim's website and I've clicked the blog and I've searched for the year 2019 and searched for March, obviously. And when I clicked March 2019 on the blog, there was one entry. I clicked to that and there was the bed in the hospital. Yeah, a picture of the bed in the hospital. And the blog post that he has written after the heart surgery was obviously published in March 2019. What the heck? That gave me, what is the word, um, goosebumps all over my body. I, I still have them or I have them again when I talk about that. Because for me, that was like, I know that many people probably will not understand what I'm feeling behind that. Many people would perhaps say that is a coincidence. But for me, that was not a coincidence. This process of making the journal was so intensive my whole days were filled with this journal my thoughts were with this journal yeah there was no space for anything else and then this happened i was like what and it happened with especially this piece and with this page yeah why not another page? Why exactly this page? On my next page here, I've made myself a little collage as a memory of 
a very special thing that happened. <laughs> if you know my channel, you exactly know what this is. So um, let me quickly explain that. Um, I have licensed the same image of this mummy like Tim has licensed it for his stamp sets. So what you can see here is the mummy from the last Halloween stamp set that he has released. And I have the same mummy in my Halloween digital printable paper that you can find in my Etsy shop. I have a video where I explain that a little bit more in detail. I will link that down below for you. And I will also, of course, link the Halloween paper down below for you. And the crazy thing behind this was not only that I have chosen, obviously, the same mummy like Tim has chosen. Many of you have written below the other video that um, we have the same taste. And many of you have written great minds think alike. That was really heartwarming for me and that means a lot to me. But the craziest thing about the thing with this mummy happened when I created a canvas as a memory for this whole thing to hang it to my wall. I will show you the canvas. I also have a video about that, how I created that. So that is this thing here. I will link the video um, that is a process video with music where I create this. Um, I will link that down below for you. So this is the mummy from my paper. As you can see, <laughs> they are so cute. They look like brothers here. And yeah, so I wanted to keep this memory with the mummy. So I've created this. And when I was nearly finished with this little collage here, I thought here on the bottom something was missing. And... In my last step, I've added this little label here because, as you can see, we have some red here and here was something missing. And I thought I will put this little number strip here with this red number. And I had the ephemera pack laying on my table and I've searched for something red. I haven't seen the number here. To be honest, yeah, I thought, okay, it's a number, but it's red and red is matching the rest. So I've put the number here. Then I have taken this canvas and I have hang it to my wall and I wanted to make a photo for Instagram. And after um, making the photo, I had it on my phone and I made all the settings for Instagram and so on. And suddenly I saw this here like a really, you know, cr mm, it was, suddenly it was so big, it was like popping out. Yeah, I thought, ooh, perhaps it's a little bit too red here. The number is also relatively big. Perhaps that's the reason why I have seen it here again. And then I thought, Louise, wait. Um, here it says 452. And then I was like, oh my goodness, what is the number of the stamp set with the mummy? I ran into my craft room. Then I have taken out the stamp set. And as you can see, the number of the stamp set is CMS 452. I guess I have to get a tattoo with 452. <laughs> That's, of course, the reason why that number is exactly here. On this page, there's the second nutcracker that can also dance. So on this page, as you can see, I have put this metal heart here that Tim has here. I mean, his one is made out of metal, mine is out of paper with embossing. Here's the three that you can see here, and this little guy, and the paintbrush. And here you can see the watercolor cases I think that's the wrong word uh, these guys here hanging on the wall I have painted these by myself with some watercolor uh, as you can guess and this area here is actually the area next to the other door in the room and here 
next to the door you can see these crazy little artworks made by an artist who works with resin and alcohol ink i've tried to make these little guys here with watercolor and some clear embossing powder that was not so easy to be honest <laughs> above that door there is a sign that says enjoy the little things and below that there's a sign that says rubber stamps made to order and on the back of this card I have this thing here that is supposed to be this on the inside of the door he has a sign that says just one life so I have put that here and I have made these little squares for me this is the pattern of the door, but I know this is really abstract, but yeah, for me it's there. <laughs> so this can go back in here. Here on my next page, I have the area below the window with this little desk. Um, so this is basically the window that we've seen before. As I told you, I have this window twice because of the space <laughs> that I have available here. So here you can see the glass media mat laying on this little desk here. Above this table, Tim has his stencils and also some swatches. The stencils in the journal are here, created out of some watercolor paper and then I've just used some die cuts. And I've tried to get them in this tag shape, like his stencils are as well. And I've also, of course, given them some numbers. <laughs> and on this one here, I have my number 452 again. So I thought that would make a great addition to this with this special number. And here on the top, we have some swatches. I have used my oxide inks for making these and seeing swatches in Tim's videos is always a very special thing for me for several reasons. Not only because of his knowledge about the color palette and where, for example, a new red belongs in the rest of the color palette. It's really amazing um, to see how he is putting colors together, for example, and how he explains how we can use those colors. And also this thing with warm colors and cold colors and that stuff. It's a little bit hard for me to explain what I'm thinking right now in English, but I think you know what I mean. But there's also another reason why I like those videos where he shows swatches, because he always writes the names of the colors. Um, to his swatches, of course, to remember which color it is. And for me, he has the most beautiful handwriting in the whole world. I am so in love with his handwriting. That's <laughs> absolutely crazy. So I wish I had his handwriting on my swatches. But of course, that's not possible. I mean, how can I do that? It's not possible. But yeah, <laughs> his phone holder is stuck into a piece of wood that has two holes so that he can vary the height of this <laughs> depending on how big the things are that he wants to show in the video that are laying on the desk here and on the right um, he has this cool thing um, with several different ephemera and tiny pieces from games and that stuff and i've tried to create this thing here with the help of these little pockets um, this is basically the half of an envelope die and I've created um, these little guys here and put several things whoo, several things in there like those playing cards and also these little guys they are here somewhere here I guess uh, you can't see them here at the moment um, then there's the picture of this woman and if i'm right this is exactly the same picture that he also has in this little box here are those billiard bowls with the numbers 2 and 10 
two. <laughs> Five and ten. I'm so sorry. One is orange and the other one is grey, like in his box as well. And here you can see these little guys with the stars. I don't know the right name for that in English. I'm sorry. They are here. And then I could see a little grandma or something like that here i couldn't really um see what that exactly is i think that is a little like plastic doll or something like that so i made this here with this little paper doll and these little guys here are here in the box as well then there's this card with the 13 here so that's supposed to be this one and here we have some doll hands. For this card, I've cut up a book from my grandma to get these doll hands here to my card. <laughs> and because of the fact that here's so much ephemera in this box, you can open this up to see the rest. Here in the background, there's a clock with some scissors. So I have made that here, um, glued the clock and then stamped the scissors here. This sign here is this. And there's also, you can't see it here, there's also a little push sign here on the left. This card you can take out. It's just a little playing around with some stuff because in this um, thing here, there are lots of tags and ticket thingies so um, I've made this little collage that you can take out and put back in here this card is blue my card is green but it's <laughs> a similar card <laughs> and next to the box there's here something I don't know what that is I guess it's some kind of a speaker or something that can play music or, or something like that um, this round little guy here and I found a bead that has nearly the same look like this crazy thing in 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 the room there next to this box and I've put that here to this little safety pin thingy next to this crazy box here there's this watercolor palette that you can see here this crazy phone that you can see here and this Millwards needle thing. I think that this is part of a vintage needle case, but I'm not totally sure. Um, Google couldn't answer all of my questions that I had while making this journal. <laughs> and with this thing, we come back to the desk for a moment because this is this postcard rack that Tim has on his desk. Those tiny postcards I made out of regular postcards just by cutting them down. I've put some crazing medium on top. And after that had dried, I've just put some crayon on top and smeared that with my finger to get this really vintage look. And these little crackled areas. And this is actually also a journaling space because you can open these up. Then you have some artsy postcard backgrounds here. I didn't want to have this area too close to the reality because, yeah, a normal postcard has a beautiful back side. But I wanted to have it a little bit more artsy. And here a little journaling space. And all of those pages you can also flip. So that you have um, some more journaling space here. On top of that postcard stand. There's a little sign that says 3 for 10. Unfortunately, unfortunately <laughs> this went here. Even if in reality it's here on the top. But I have seen that too late. I already had um, put the postcards to my page and glued them down and then there was not enough space. So I've put that here. Why not? And you can also read that from the back because I've put it here because there was, of course, enough space. And when you 
um, look from those little ink bottles here into that direction a little bit like this I guess I guess then you could also see it in approximately this spot here those ink bottles you can find also in the area above his desk meaning above this globe and the other things that are on this little wooden box with the four drawers that we had in the very beginning and um, they are standing on this little shelf here so I've tried to imitate that shelf by adding this little piece here and by the way those ink bottles are exactly the same like you can see here in the video <laughs> and they are also of course in exactly the same order like they are here yeah so this little sign here you can find here i've just used one of these metal labels this says lost and found not the same like here but why not i mean <laughs> it's my journal here I have this crazy doll <laughs> on this giant hotel sign that you can see here. Um, and here it was really hard for me to see what all of those items are uh, because they are so high in the room. Um, and it was really hard for me to imitate that because um, here are some things where I even don't know the name of them, yeah, even not in German. So I thought, why not write collect stuff here? Because this is collected stuff. Yeah, so that is my interpretation of this area. Here is this five um, that is a little bit more here. Um, and this doll <laughs> I've made out of a doll also from this um, doll book from my grandma. I've cut out single pieces. Um, that is actually a book where you can learn how to make your own dolls. And that was basically a naked doll that I have put together. The head and the body and this arm I've cut out separately. And then I've tried to color that and um, yeah, make it similar to this doll here. And then I realized that in the video you can see that this doll has... Um, is holding a sign. This sign says, please do not disturb. And as you can see here, it is exactly the same sign. I mean, when you compare that with the video, you will notice that this is exactly the same sign. And this comes also from, from one of um, Tim's paper pads. So he has obviously taken the sign and put that into that paper pad for us so that we can use it. And it was really handy here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here's this little... Propeller thingy, you know, but you can see it here this little guy. I've found this charm this I actually bought in Rome um, I even don't know why I have chosen this but Somehow it looked interesting to me and I've used uh, I've bought it and now I could use it here um, Really cool to have that to symbolize this thing and when we um, look from those ink bottles into the direction of the door we will find a really big sign with popcorn i will show you that in a second and tim often says it's like popcorn in my brain <laughs> so i've written this quote here to this little page this you can take out it's just a journaling card but not only that on the back there are the other three ink bottles that of course belong exactly here so ooh, a little bit closer so that this row is complete um so i'm playing with this butterfly here and here's the popcorn sign um he bought that from uh, how is the name cracker jack company they are also on instagram and they make those really cool vintage signs and he has this really giant popcorn bag on his door and I have made this by using some flower die cuts, coloring them in with some oxide inks so that they hopefully now look like popcorn. And then I have painted this here um, to this background. And now I have this sign here as the card that can go in here. Here's his YouTube award 
I guess it's for passing 100,000 subscribers. I'm hoping I'm right. This um, in his room is actually a piece of art by Josie Lewis, Josie Lewis art on Instagram. And I've tried to make this here really, really abstract with some watercolors. And then I've distressed that a little bit to make it a little bit more vintage like his um, pieces as well. And then Tim has a really giant shelf with some clocks that I have put to this page. And there's also a sign that says Clockmakers Designer Specialist Cabinet Maker. So I've written that here to this black um, paper. And I've tried to get friend with my handwriting in this journal as well because <laughs> some of those um, writings I have written by myself and not used die cuts. That was really hard and to be honest, those things I've made several times until I was satisfied with the result. <laughs> and here you can see who has made the journal. <laughs> and this is journal number 90 that I have ever created in my junk journal life. So I hope you are still here <laughs> because <laughs> now, of course, I want to show you the box a little bit closer. So here we go. This frame here I've made out of just cardstock. <laughs> I hope it looks a little bit like wood when you look at it. Um, these little thingies here on top are actually some of those bling bling plastic thingies. Really ugly in my eyes. I don't use them but I had some. And I have glued them here um, to the cardstock. And then covered that up with thousands of layers <laughs> of different mediums to get this look. Here's also some crackle paste involved. And this giant tea actually has some real light bulbs. And that also has to do with the story that I want to tell you now, because I actually had to recreate this big tea for approximately five times. So that this is the fifth version of this tea. This was the first thing that I've made for this whole project. And I was not sure about which materials, how big shall that be? How can I get this distressed look that the real tea has as well? Will it be possible that the people can realize what this shall be? And I struggled a lot. And, um, for the other versions, I had little tiny glass thingies, but not real light bulbs. And then one day I found a little box here in my caravan that was actually left over from the person who has sold me the caravan and the tiny house. He has left them some things behind and there was this little box and in that box, I found those little um, light bulbs and I've used them. And instead of putting this little box back to the place where it originally was, I've put it into my drawer with all of those charms and metal things and that stuff because I thought perhaps there are some tiny things inside that I later on can use for other projects. And nearly the whole time while I have created this bottom area here with all of those elements, I thought, how the heck can I create this little music band that you can see here? This is basically a little band, yeah, that are men that have music instruments. And I was like, how the heck? Yeah, they have to be so tiny. I already had this domino box and I thought five of those people have to fit on top of this small surface of the box. And I was like, how can I do that? And I had nearly finished this whole area here. Um, I was working on this little car and I was searching for the wheels of the car and I couldn't find anything that I could, can use for that. And um, then I thought, okay, this box that I had put into the drawer with my charms and so on, where I found the light bulbs, 
perhaps this box has something really tiny that I can use for those wheels. Yeah, in my head there were those wheels. So I went through this box with my fingers <laughs> and it feels really strange to talk about that because it feels so unreal what happened next. I went through those items with my finger and suddenly I saw those tiny people here. There were those people in this box. I mean, what the heck? I was like, like screaming. Um, <laughs> my hubby was outside in the kitchen and he was afraid to come in because he thought that I had perhaps destroyed my project or that it has fallen off from the table and everything is destroyed or something like that because I was, was screaming. I was like, what is that? What, what am I seeing here? Why are they here? Yeah, but I, I couldn't speak it out. He came in and asked, Luisa, what happened? What happened? Uh, are you in pain or what happened? And I was standing in front of my table with the little musicians here and I was like pointing to them without being able to speak yeah and he was like hey you need those musicians where where did you get them I mean for that you have to know um, I can't receive packages or something like that so easily here on the campsite and the most of the time um, he is picking up my packages so he knew that he um, that I haven't ordered them yeah because he has brought not brought no package to me so uh, they can't they couldn't have come with the postman yeah and he was like Th that's not true that's absolutely not true why I mean we are on a campsite this is a caravan this is a tiny house this is probably um not something that you would normally have in a tiny house on a campsite. Uh, do you know what I mean? And <laughs> after searching for the ones that I want to, wanted to use here, I've painted their um, clothes red because originally they were gray. That was not so easy. But I'm so happy that I have them here and this will be a memory until the end of my life. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then there's another really crazy thing that happened with this box here. When Tim had his Christmas tour video, I was working on this area here. So there was the live video on his channel where he has shown his Christmas decor. And I was working on this. And a few days before the Christmas tour video, Tim has posted on Instagram a story that he has bought a ticket holder on Etsy. And when I saw his story, um, I was like, ooh, a ticket holder. That's a new item in his room. So that's a new item for my journal. I could create this ticket holder out of paper as well. But I need to know where I have to put it in my journal because I don't know where it is in his room. So during the live chat of the Christmas decor video, I have written the question, where did you put the ticket holder? And for me, it's totally unbelievable that someone can talk, show something, and at the same time read the live chat during a live video. Tim can do that. It's totally amazing. It's for me, it's absolutely incredible. And I had the luck that he read my question and he has repeated the question, where did you put the ticket holder? <laughs> While he was standing in his living room. He turned around, walked through the dining room into the craft room. Yeah. And he came around this corner so basically around here. And I thought he wants to show where the ticket holder is. But then he stopped here. Here was one of this um, snow globes that he has put for Christmas decoration. He has shown us that and what he has done with that. And he walked around here and I had the feeling he has forgotten to show where the ticket holder is. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was really, really funny. But next to that, I could also see that below this glass dome, there's actually another box and not the same box like in this video. Um, a while before that happened, I already had this box here. I mean, I had created it and I wanted to put it below the glass dome because this box looks nearly like the box that is in this video. But in the Christmas tour video, I thought, okay, there's another box. And I was so fascinated by this label of the box that I thought, okay, let's try to find uh, a way to create this box. And I was like, what is that? And I could read Stafford's Extra Glue. And then I thought, okay, let's try to put that name into the Google search bar. I've put that into the Google search bar and I will show you my result that I've made a screenshot uh, from my phone. So you can see my original result that I have seen in that moment as well here in the screen now. And I was like, oh my goodness, there is such a box. So I thought, let's click the picture to make it a little bit bigger, to see the details and that stuff, to be able to make a box like this. So I had the photo from Google and my screenshot of the video next to each other. And then I realized that this photo from the Google search was basically um, a photo from an Etsy item. So I um, was leaded to an Etsy item where I could still see the pictures even if the item was sold. I compared the pictures from this Etsy thingy and from the video and I've realized that those little damages on the boxes are exactly the same. I mean, you can see where the box is damaged and it's like a little pattern. Yeah, It's really obvious that this is a little bit broken here. And I've compared it and I was like, oh my goodness, it's exactly the same. That means <laughs> I have accidentally found exactly that item on Etsy that Tim obviously has bought. <laughs> I was like, what? What? I mean, is that coincidence or what is that? I don't know, but now the box is here. <sighs> and <laughs> I've tried to find things that I could use for creating these little guys here on the bottom, These all of these elements. Um, these things are mainly made out of wood, little wooden blocks that I have glued together. That is basically, you can see that here, that is basically the same thing like you can see printed on this paper. Yeah, do you know those little like scrabble wooden blocks and I have glued them together to the right size and here um, I've also put them into this whole book cover to create this uh, little area here um, so this is basically a book cover um, cut down to the right size and then I've just filled that up with those wooden thingies to make it really sturdy and um, <laughs> those little paint tubes here, I guess that this is, in reality, it's oil, oil paint. I have taken some really weird tiny things where I don't know the English name. <laughs> and I've wrapped some masking tape around, crumbled that up a little bit, and then I've painted that silver. And the whole jar is filled with those tiny tubes. This is a real paintbrush that I've just cut off and then I've put um, the top here, <laughs> really fluffy. Uh, this little um, thing here where the pens are in, in Tim's room it's a trophy cup. I've used a thimble for that because I thought that is really cute. Um, yeah, this book for example is made out of a real book as well. It has real pages in it. So I was like really looking for extreme details yeah so that's also the reason why this whole glass is filled with the tubes and not only the tube that you can see 
is a tube. I mean, I could have put something else in here because you can't see it so clearly, but I wanted to have this really detailed and I know that there are all of those tubes in this glass. Yeah, I couldn't live with having something else just to fill the glass up. <laughs> so, yeah, I've recreated this little um, glass dome here. I think that's in reality a really, really special gift that he got from Paula. Those spark plugs, I hope that that is the right word in English, um, that are in the original glass. I've recreated with some beads that are put on some wire to create those tiny things. This rhino gave me some headaches as well. <laughs> Tim has a rhino in his room that is made out of metal and that's an artwork by an artist from South Africa, if I'm remembering that right. My rhino is made out of plastic and it's originally one of those children rhinos, you know, uh, playing rhinos. I, I don't know the word. I've cut that off and I've changed um, the look a little bit. You can see this rhino has a leg here. Tim's rhino hasn't a leg. It's only the head. But I didn't want to have it too close to this original artwork in his craft room. I wanted to make my own version and mine is made out of plastic. His one is made out of metal. So there's already a really big difference. So I've decided to leave the leg and make this little yeah, box to the wall here so that he can stand on this box. And so this box also has a sense you know, it was originally here and now it is here. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> if you are still here and if you've made it through the whole video, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching such a long video. I really was struggling before starting recording this because I knew that this will be a really, really long session. But I also wanted to give you details about this project and especially my thoughts behind the project. And I wanted to share those things that happened. Especially those crazy things that happened. And I highly appreciate that you take the time to watch such a long video and listen to what I want to share. That's really, really appreciated. And I'm so happy that... All of you are out there watching my videos. Thank you so much for that. If you have any questions, then please feel free to leave a comment below this video. Um, I'm really, really excited about what you will think about this project. Please let me know what you think about that. And last but not least, Tim, if you perhaps are watching this video as well, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to watch this and to listen to me. And I want to thank you so much for giving me the inspiration for this journal. Because without your craft room and without all of your ideas how to decorate it, this journal wouldn't exist. And I'm really, really grateful for having this journal. And the possibility to experience everything that I have experienced during the process of making this. I had so much fun playing with your stuff, with your inks and your papers, your embellishments, you know, all of that stuff. It was really intensive and I think I have learned a lot about my skills. I have learned a lot about techniques I think I could improve some of the things that I already knew. I learned totally new things and I will be forever grateful for this experience. It was like a holiday for me making this journal. And all of those crazy things that happened are really, really special for me. And perhaps I'm the only one that sees them as a special thing. Perhaps you think that it is some kind of special as well. <laughs> I don't know, but thank you very, very much for 
the most beautiful craft room in this world and for showing that to us and for letting us be a part of your life as well. That is really, really awesome. It's just awesome. <sighs> so we will see, hopefully, we will see the next time with a shorter video <laughs> with some new ideas. And I wish you a very creative time until we see the next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.